Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is me live from Harlem in New York City, Alex Bennett, and this of course is The Ramble. Well that there, over there, <laughs> is Lori Thompson. Hi Lori. Hello, pleased to be here, Mr. She, B. She's down in sunny Florida and she always rubs it in by sitting outside. I do like sitting outside. There's just something fun about, I don't know, just enjoy, just walking out without having to put a, a coat on. Yeah. That is, but that's nirvana to me. Does it ever get so cold you couldn't sit out there? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. See, we're in the panhandle, which is a different ball game than Miami. Mm -hmm. Most people think of Miami when they think of the picture postcards. But we get we get wet amounts to seasons. Um, the it doesn't last long. This, you know, we have temperatures in the 30s, occasionally the 20s, um, but it doesn't last long. Really? It kicks in, yeah, in December, last through January, at least mid-January, often late January. Yeah, well, here the, it, here the air conditioner hasn't been off for two months. Yeah, it's, see, we, okay, how does this happen? You being a feller and all. Okay. Okay, when my, when my husband and I, and yes, we lived in sin before we got married. Um, but he and and we were totally sin, sin, in a, sin. By the way, is a city in Florida. That's where they. Were it is. Living, it's, you know. it's everywhere they, in they Florida. They were living in sin. <laughs> Vegas, nothing. But uh, yeah, when we first moved in together, I liked the temperature. I thought the temperature seventy eight is a good temperature, and he agreed with me. And I now know it was all a trick, because now I come in and go, what's the what's the temperature? What's the thermometer doing on seventy six? And, you know, he was all for 78, so we got married, and then, boom. And well, then I kind of agree with him about 78. You know, the problem is that we have it set at, at such a level that it, how can I put it, uh, that it, it, it's just freezing in there all the time. See, you that's know. what I can't. And, and I why, find that 76 we put it at, but if I really wanted a, not to be as cold in there, I'd probably go 77. 77. I'd yeah. settle for 77. Yeah. yeah, it's it's fine. I think we may have come to Jesus on 77. Yeah. But no, that's wrong. You, you, you don't see your electric bill, do you? No. He does He does all of that. That's uh, by So you have no idea what the electric bill is? No. Ours I'm blissfully for, ignorant. Ours for last month went over 600. No, because of the air condition? Yep. It's usually Whoa. during the middle of winter, it's about 300 or something. I mean, we have, you know, we have a lot of rooms here. Okay. We yeah, have, you, we do, have 20, you have a great apartment. We, we, we have 2,500 square feet. But on the other hand, in the winter, it's steam heat, so we don't have to pay for that. Oh, right. yeah. Isn't it great? But, I love it. Still, I got all this electrical equipment and, I, you know, the, the studio stuff in the studio, all the computers are one, two, three computers in here alone. And they're on all the time. You know, they'll think they'll think you're Bitcoin farming. Yeah. Uh, you know, and then Marjorie, all the TV sets we have and so on. So yeah, you go on and on. And it gets to be it goes under 300, I think, a little under 300 during the winter. Uh, it yeah, used to be current. it used to be less, but they keep raising the rates. I uh, yeah, that's where they my nana would say that's where they get you. Yeah. But um, we, I grew up in a three story house, and my parents it was regularly in the winter six and seven hundred dollars. So we and we spent most of our time downstairs. So we had uh, like two air conditioners downstairs, and that was fine, you know, because uh, it worked. If we were right. hot, we'd just go downstairs. And that worked out pretty well. Well, what happens but, here is we have a big swinging door. We close that. Yeah. And we turn like on the air door. conditioner in the bedroom, which is like 1,200 BTU. And then yeah. I've got one here in the studio, which is like 6,000 6, BTU. I would tell yeah. You, yeah. 6,000 6, uh, 6, BTU. 
And uh, both of them are on all the time. And we keep the back area cool. But we, the, you, you open the door and you go out into the living room and the dining room, and it's like a, a steam bath in there. A sauna. Yeah. That but, you know, we, also we can't turn on too much electricity, otherwise we blow the fuse, or air conditioning, otherwise we blow the fuses. So. Yeah. Well, that's, and like we have central air, but they're on different thermostats upstairs and down, you know. So yeah. sometimes you can come to an agreement as a couple where it's like, you get the upstairs, I get the downstairs, you know, to set the thermometer. We have not come to that. If yet. that's the worst of your arguing, I would say you've got a pretty good thing going. <laughs> You know. We have we have our strengths. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, and, it, it, it Marjorie, however, is uh, is um, obsessive compulsive. Okay. Oh, really? Yes. She won't admit it, but she is obsessive compulsive. And uh, so uh, that being the case, I have to do everything her way. See, that's it. They get you. I have a similar issue. And, and finally, a couple of months ago, I said to her. She said, and make sure this is this way. You know, the pillow is on this side, on the other side of the bed. And I go, Marjorie, too many rules. I've just got, would you write them all down, please? You yeah, know? because after what it is, I think deep down is controlling. And I mean, that's the yeah. obvious. And then also it gives some kind of innate sense of, of security to the person making these demands because they feel like the environment is under their control. Well, my question and, is, my question is, if you have a, um, a what do you call it, a, uh, an argument about something, does he give in to you pretty easily? No. He doesn't I defer would, to you. No, he wouldn't. Um, he, but we neither of us like to argue and we don't like confrontation. So that. We just simmer. <laughs> we simmer about things. You simmer and about things? Because I don't like powders, and so I'm not a powder, I don't think. I just get, uh, you know, kind of quiet or, or not as, I don't know, just not as interjective with humor. Um, so I, my behavior does change, but I don't like pouting. It's too, life's too short. To yeah, well, I, you see, here's the thing. I always, uh, I always, I've learned years ago, you just give in to the woman. You just don't even argue with her. Well, I like that philosophy. If it, well, if it no, no, I mean, it, it, but it's like, you know, okay, dear, you're right. You know, anything to just prevent an argument from happening. Yeah, I, I don't like arguing at all. I think it's such a waste of life. But see, I can, I can address an issue in a calm voice, which to me is very important. I don't use profanity when I'm discussing something of importance, and I don't uh, raise my voice. I don't like screaming. And when you're with somebody from Long Island, you know, who's Italian, the voice levels go up. And I tend to equate that subconsciously with, this is chaos. People are pissed. Everything, it's the apocalypse. And so I've had to unlearn that and just say my point in a flat so, voice. So he's Italian? Mm -hmm. He's Ita half Italian, half Polish. So turn along the there, army. There are a couple of jokes there, I would imagine. If you, oh, uh, probably a myriad yeah. of jokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, and know. I would say more influenced by the Italian side of the thing. So we eat good. You know, we eat really well. Yeah. But, I <laughs> and mean, he knows a bottle of limericks. <laughs> Well, no, there's another thing about uh, that I was going to mention uh, about that um, is that in, he has automatic Italian citizenship. It, really? Because the mother? It, well, he can go there and he can buy a home and he, he can do all the stuff an Italian citizen can do and, uh, because he's considered automatic citizenship because he's Italian. Wow. Yeah. You know what? Another great law the Italians have, if you're a public place, be it a restaurant, a golf course, and anything, mm -hmm. and someone from the public who's not using your services comes to your place and said, I'd like to use your bathroom, it's a law they have to let you use their bathroom, which I think is very cool. Well, that, that's, that, that's as it should be. I remember, remember we had the thing in San Francisco with Willie Brown? You know? Which, where, which where, one? Where I, I had a problem with... Uh, the fact that the city was, you know, 
I walked into a bathroom in New York City once, and I saw somebody trying to go into the bathroom, and they were a homeless person, and the guy said, get the hell out of here. Yeah. And I thought to myself, that's why they shit in the streets. You know, they can't. No kidding. So I, I t uh, told w uh, Willie Brown's office that we should have a law that if you have a public place, like a hotel, yep. like a garage, yep. like anything, you have to make at least one bathroom available to people who need them at any time, no matter who they are. Yeah, when I found out, I love Italy anyway, but when I found that out, I loved them even well, more. Well, I mentioned it to uh, Angela Aliotto, who was yeah, on Yeah, she, she was uh, Italian. On the council, and she, on the council. And, she was a good and, and a good friend. By the way, and uh, I, I I told her about this, and she went in and she made a law, and it's kind of the Bennett law, that if you own a public garage, you have to make the bathrooms available. Oh, like a gas station to you the mean? homeless. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's good. And gas stations, I have to say, are pretty good about. It. Um, but you know, some places, especially when you're like going from one country to another, you learn what the subtle differences are. And I just love them for that, the Italians. Well, that, 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 I didn't know that, but that should be. It should be that any place that, uh, that has a bathroom, if you need a bathroom, you should be able to knock on the door and say, I need to use your bathroom, and you go right ahead. Just don't, exactly. Just don't crap yeah. on the floor, you know? <laughs> I would think that they would prefer you going to the bathroom than cleaning up feces every morning. Another poop. Yeah, you know, no, that but that's a, great, that's a great law. It's a great law. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, but uh, then remember we, we decided we were going to have uh, homeless people because they were camping out in front of City Hall. <laughs> they were, which was only a block from the old station or uh, two. Mm -hmm. So we decided to do a show from there with the homeless, and we asked Willie Brown to come. I, would you come and talk to them? And, mm -hmm. and hold kind of a, a town meeting with the with the homeless. That was cool. And he said, uh, sure, just let me know when and I'll be there. So we set the whole thing up. We got the remote lines going in there, all the things we Which had to do. Which were pricey at the time. Yeah. And then we uh, we told him uh, it, we're going to do it on uh, Friday, blah, 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 blah. He said, okay, I'll be there. Well, it gets to be ten. It gets to be like uh, eight thirty, and he hasn't shown up yet. And finally, he shows up at nine, and stays there for ten minutes and leaves. He's yeah, tightly booked. You know, that's today. not what I call a town hall meeting, exactly. No, no. And yeah. I think it's because we demand so much less. Did you know after Trump's uh, assassination attempt, or whatever it was, he got shot. Yeah. Um, that there was um, a story came to the surface that Teddy Roosevelt had ma been making a speech and he was shot in an assassination attempt and he continued his speech with a bullet in his chest. Teddy Roosevelt was I contributed. didn't know that. I, did not I didn't that. either. I didn't either. And it then it uh, you know it gave him that good reputation as a tough as nails kind of guy. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, this guy just get, gets his ear clipped and he acts like it's the biggest deal in the world. He, he wears a tampon on his ear at the convention, you know. Uh, he should just make a headband out of napkins. No, I mean, he made a big deal out of it. And he it, it is even thought that he didn't get that wasn't the bullet that did that, that the bullet hit the uh, the uh, uh, teleprompter. And the glass from the teleprompter, the shrapnel from that is what did that to yeah. his ear. I can see if you were in his place where you would be tempted to work it. Nothing oh, like oh, the tempt, side of blood. Tempted to work it, he, he worked it, you know. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. by the grace of God that I'm here. It just yeah. gave you. Now, so here, courtesy of God, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Donald Trump, you know. Right. I'm still having a difficult time forgiving him. I mean, this was years ago when they played that recording of him talking about how. Uh, women are just throwing their pussy at you, they, you know, and it's just, yeah. Uh, I had, and there was a hardcore Donald Trumper who had uh, two daughters. And I said, how can you vote for this man? I mean, he was mega hardcore signs in the yard. I said, Bernie, how can you vote for this man knowing this is how he feels about your daughters? He doesn't know them. He met him in a hard, if you met him in a place and he 
thought one of them was a hottie, you know, they would not be safe with him. And he, he was just like, ah, that's that was, you know, they pooed it. He poo pooed it. Wow. And uh, yeah. that, like, that was a trap. They got it. They trapped him. It's not a trap. You know, no. I mean, uh, the, he, he got found guilty in a civil court of, yeah. of rape. You know, I mean, he, he uh, but I mean, the point is that that uh, uh, if, if you have daughters at home, how can you even begin to think this idea is a guy, guy is a good idea? Now, I understand you don't want to vote for the Democrat. So you've got yeah. a real problem there. OK. Yeah. Uh, and there are no other choices. I mean, RFK Jr., come on, give me a break. You know. <laughs> he says that thing about the worm he in his head. He worms brain. in his head. Yeah. <laughs> I thought, Bob, Bob. He doesn't have them anymore because they went, let's get the hell out of here. You know, I mean. <laughs> But, they crawled out his ear all super Yeah, I, but I, I just don't understand. I, I, you know, I understand the conundrum they're in, you know, because they were, oh. hand, they've been handed this megalomaniac as a, uh, as a candidate, and you consider yourself a lifelong Republican. You want to stick with the party, but do you want to vote for Trump? You know, and what are your choices there? Your choice, really, I got to tell you, if you're a Republican, you don't like Donald Trump, stay home. Yeah. Exactly. That's your way of voting. Or if you like him, stay yeah. home. <laughs> stay home. Then you don't have to vote for a Democrat, but you're not helping him. Yeah, but remember our old motto, if you don't vote, you lose the right to bitch. <laughs> no, but, no. I, 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 if I don't vote, it's me using my right to bitch. That's okay. Yeah, you, you are. You get me you what I'm saying? You know, I mean, I often think that if I, if I don't vote, and so that guy doesn't get my vote. It doesn't encourage him. All right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, that's yeah. my my way of voting would be not to vote. Okay. Yeah, I it, think it, in a situation where I'm being given the lesser of two evils. Yeah. I don't accept well, that. You know. This, this discussion we've had makes me more inclined to look closer at Kamala Harris yeah. and see if see if I've been. You know, misinformed or wrong about her because I just didn't see her as having. Let me ask done. you this: Could you go into that voting booth and vote for Trump? Oh no way! Not oh, with an okay. offer of a oh, hundred thousand okay. dollars. Okay, so you've either got a choice of Kamal Harris or not voting at all. I'll vote for Kamal Harris. Yeah, you see. Yeah, that's especially if she does something. If she continues, well, let me qualify it. If she continues to handle the situation with the poise and the grace that she has handled it. Yeah. You know, so far, it's a long roll, I know, to Yeah, but there's no, no, no reason, to, uh, nothing indicates the fact that you have to worry about that, you know? Right. That she, she's handling it with grace because she's got more grace than to, uh, Donald Trump has. Uh, yeah. Right. And when and given the choice, why would you not want to be gracious in this life? You know, just, I mean, anything that comes at you, go, is this going to last in the long run? Or can I be gracious about it? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and, and so, I mean, it's, uh, it's, uh, I'm hearing those birds. Those birds are uh, shat yeah. <laughs> shattering away today. We, uh, and they start early. And they, they I mean, they're all kinds yeah. of, and they all chat. They have yeah. coffee clatches. But she has, she has a nice poise, and I think she has a kind of a winning quality. And that when she meets people and shakes their hand, it isn't just like, oh, well, okay, you're here, and I'm supposed to shake your hand. It's like very, very, uh, uh, what could I call it? Just right. It's just not, you know. It's not that she's doing it because she has to. It's not a put on. Exactly. Well, and I think when you uh, when you don't rush through things, she doesn't ever seem like she's in a huge, ridiculous hurry. Yeah. Which I appreciate more and more as I get older. Well, I saw her. As she was going in a line yesterday with the two, uh, a mother and her two black daughters. Uh -huh. And she was down there. She got down on her kind of haunches rather than, so she spoke to the kids' level. And she was talking to these kids for like one, two minutes. You know, it wasn't like yeah. she was blowing them off, you know. Yeah. I think she has a wonderful quality in a politician is to focus on the moment. Mm -hmm. Because that moment will lead to another moment. And you have that gracious rehearsal mm -hmm. under your belt. You can do it again. If anything, I'm 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 impressed by it because 
Uh, I was getting a little tired of the stumbling Joe Biden and yeah, it became equally, equally tired about the lying and uh, duplicitous uh, Donald Trump. And I really wanted somebody else. Some, mm -hmm. And it's kind of like I went into, in and took a good shower and I came out and I'm clean now. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Cleansed. <laughs> yeah. And it's not that she maybe is the greatest choice and there aren't people with better qualifications, but she's refreshing. And that's it's important to to, uh, to me as a, as a Democrat. You know, I, I did go independent and then I found out I couldn't vote in the primary. So I went back to saying I'm a Democrat. Well, I was independent for years, and you just vote on leash laws and things, you know? I mean, yeah, well, no, I, I was thinking that if I was an independent, they would say, okay, well, you can vote either way. You know, you can vote yeah, in either primary. Pick your primary. Yeah. In some states, you can. Yeah. You know, you can jump, yeah, the, jump the line. There are a lot of obstacles to registering independent. You know what drives yeah. me really nuts, though, is they go... Mm -hmm. Well, gee, she's only got three and a half months to win the presidency. Well, wait a minute, hold on. How many months do they have in England? They just had a, 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 a you know, a, a, a election over there, and uh, hmm, let's see, hmm. they do it within two and a half months. <laughs> and they had one yeah. in France, one month. I know, man. So it if gets, we if we gets. can't if we can't do it in three and a half months, we're real pussies. Yeah, that's <laughs> like shape up, America. Yeah, but I mean that's no that's no big problem, you know. I I, I just don't understand it, you know why that's why what? people are so oh gee they we've only got this amount of time. Well, you know what the big problem is? We created the primaries, and the primaries weren't created until uh, in, uh, 1912, and they didn't really come into full fashion until the 60s. Most right. states didn't even hold them. You, they, you sent your guys to conventions. You get delegates, and they go to the convention, and then they fight for the for who's going to be uh, president, who's going to be your standard bearer. It was they were never primaries. They're not in the Constitution. Why do we do them? They're a waste of money. I don't know. Unless it was the cities realizing how much revenue it brings in, and that way they would be jazzed to get. You know, to be decided what, what, on. What as kind food. of revenue? Where's the revenue coming from? Oh, restaurants, Ben, taxis, everything. What for? Like for primaries? Well, yeah. I mean, if you're having the primary in Milwaukee, was it the Republicans? I mean, do I go to the primary, cross the street, and say, "Now I'm hungry. Let me go to a restaurant." You know? <laughs> no, well, I just mean the people. The influx of people is more if you're a primary because when the was it uh, the the convention, rather, well, the was convention. In. Well, the convention is a different thing. But I'll the primaries themselves do not give any money to the... Uh, if they get any money, it's that they get money from the government to hold them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But, so, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I misspoke on that. Um, I was referring to the primary, or to yeah. the uh, convention. Yeah, the convention <laughs> is... Yeah, that's a different situation altogether. But I, I just feel that we sit there... And we're, we're spending all this money on primaries. And actually, primary doesn't matter after the first vote anyway. <laughs> the first vote at the convention, they're all pledged delegates. Yeah. Second, uh, if it, they don't get it in the first vote, it's an open convention. So what mm -hmm. are you doing that for? You I know? don't know. It's a, it seems to be a lot of what, kerfuffle for no real there, there shouldn't be any politicking till uh, after the convention, not before the convention. It's a waste of time. It's speculative and just a, plan, a chance for people to party. That's what it is. I guess. I uh, then again, I'm not a party guy, so you know. I know. Yeah. Doesn't Nor matter. Am I to me. <laughs> yeah, well, you look like you're just enjoying hanging out in Florida. You know, it's not a bad life. Yeah, I haven't yeah. played I haven't played bingo or shuffleboard yet, so I'm you know I'm keeping it real. <laughs> What's that new thing with paddles? Uh, 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 oh, uh, paddle boards? No, no, no. The old people get oh pickleball, pickleball, pickleball. pickleball. Yeah, it, it's big here. But, what, a, what a and, stupid uh, game! It's table. Oh, ta it's it's table it's tennis cool. without the table. Right, which I like. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
<laughs> and you get to buy new clothes, you know, cool new running shoes or court shoes. And but then you, of but then you have to say when they ask you where were you today, you go, well, I was out playing pickleball. <laughs> Which to me always sounds like a euphemism for sex. Out playing pickleball. Yeah, let's play. <laughs> let's play with your pickleball. Your pickle and yeah. your balls. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, you could you could have a field day with um, pickle balls. <laughs> hey, listen, we've run out of time. It happens, you know. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm glad you're you're feeling better, and I'm feeling better. Cause well, I'm well I'll let you know. It, it, next week, I, mean, I have to go back and get more work done, and it was the work that just knocked me out. My mouth was. In, you can't move your mouth, and it just does something like a foggy. It's yeah. like a fog feeling yeah. that yeah. settles over. I just want to sit down and do a, a show. Okay. Yeah. 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 But I'm yeah. back on the mend and all of that, and uh, you're looking healthy and happy and in spite of the fact that you have a cold uh yeah. you seem to be just fine you know this joe is my tylenol <laughs> yeah. it helps feel better instantly I right. well me too i don't you know it's so easy it's ridiculous but anyway we've run out of time and uh, uh we'll see laurie again uh, next week i guess right laurie absolutely there she is ladies and gentlemen the always effective laurie thompson <laughs> Goodbye, Laurie. Now in its 10th year, this is Gavin. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, that's our old friend, Laurie Thompson. We love having Laurie around, don't we? Oh, we do. Absolutely. And hello, everybody. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's Wednesday, so it must be time for Alex to do his little little thing here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And after this, I'm going to go to bed early so I can get up early and go to my dentist for one more shot at getting this thing taken care of. So, anyway. And then I'm all through until we decide about a month from now to put a crown on it and do all of that, you know. But anyway, uh, I, uh, I just wanted to say hello to everybody and bye-bye now. No, I um, I have something. Well, I'll show you something in a little bit here. As soon as we uh, we we get people on, uh, let's uh, we have a bunch, a, a small group of people here who are ready and willing to join us here. There we go. There they are. Here we got Jeff and we got uh, Alan and we've got the lovely and attractive um, um, Charlie Wallace. I, uh, in fact, Charlie, I'm always jealous of your T-shirts, you know? <laughs> I'm always jealous of the, of the T-shirts that yeah. you wear. And finally, Marjorie went out and bought me a T-shirt. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Let me just uh, add Roberta to the group so she can see. So Marjorie went out and bought me a T-shirt. She's very proud of it. And I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I really like it, too. Uh, here, let me show you here. I have to stand up. Okay. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Isn't that a great T-shirt? Yeah. Yeah. What does yours say, Charlie? My favorite childhood memory is my back not hurting. Yeah, so, yes, I would say that's true. Last night I woke or, up. Or, or or never never having to trust a fart. <laughs> last night I well, actually what what happens to me last night I was sleeping and I, I slept wrong or something, you know, which is common these days. <laughs> and all of a sudden in the middle of the night I back wake up and my back back here is just killing me. And my arm is my hand is numb. And apparently, I slept on it or something, and it hurt for like about ten minutes I, before the hurting went away. You ever had the? It looks like it happened to you, Charlie. Oh, it happens to me at least uh, once a month. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, then I'm lucky. Yes, Roberta. Here we are talking about how how sick we are. You know, all our little ailments and so on. That's okay. I'm I'm sitting here with my back hurting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I've never asked you how old you are. Do you mind if I ask? You can no. ask. No. Uh, I'm in my 70s. In your 70s? Wow. Yeah. Oh. 
Wow. Wow, you don't look it. You look terrific. Yeah. <laughs> On the outside, I look great. On the inside, I'm just like you guys. <laughs> Oh, well, no, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, inside, uh, you know, you look, you look fine, but it doesn't mean you have to feel fine, you know. <laughs> but you get all these aches and pains, you know, and they just get worse and worse. Hey, kids, if you're listening to the program, I just want yeah. you to know that, okay? So anyway, um, how, how's it going? Everybody have a nice weekend? Yeah. 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 I'm off in Maine. Huh? Maine. I'm in Maine. Oh, you're up in Maine now. Wow. Yeah. You're, uh, you're you ever travel to the West Coast? <laughs> <laughs> I do. Yeah, well, come, visit, come visit. I have a spare bedroom for you. And All me. right. I'll guarantee I'll yeah, uh, no, do that. So. But what I was going to say is, Jeff, uh, that Jeff uh, goes to Maine, and it's an island, right? It, yeah. Well, uh, we rented a place that's absolutely gorgeous it's right on the edge of the ocean and uh, it's beautiful but my family which really means my wife and her two sisters own this little building little camp you'll call it uh, in the middle of the ocean and they go up they've been going there since they're kids since they're born there some of them and uh, the old building uh, needs tune-up. So we got two of our youngsters who are younger, you know, Andrew from me, but uh, two other kids uh, from uh, Pam's uh, sisters. And they're out there this week working on fixing that building. So you're putting them to work is what you're saying. For free, too. For free, of course. <laughs> All you got to do is bring her food and, and wine and, and whatever they want, beer, whatever, the, the important stuff. What kind of Are work? you anywhere near in Deer Isle, Maine? Oh, we're, we're so far. If you go any further, you're in Canada. I think. Oh, okay. Never. Isn't the island that you guys own there Martha's Vineyard or something like that? That's <laughs> not in Maine. <laughs> It's all the same thing to me, the whole eastern seaboard. Yeah, this is know. this is so little it's it's unbelievable. But. Well, the eastern seaboard's very nice. It is. You know, it really is. Yeah. And, and, and uh, sometimes some days here it's just absolutely beautiful. And then other days it's rainy and cold and wow. you know, the temperatures come down here. So uh but it's I'm actually having a good a good week here. And I'm gonna spend here for two. Is weeks. the weather cooler up there generally? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Okay. I, I, I went to summer camp in Deer Isle, which is why I was asking. Oh. And well, hmm. of course, you know, like everything else, they it didn't make enough money and had too many insurance liabilities, so they turned it into some kind of a development or something. I don't yeah. know. The camp's gone. But I remember uh, going into the main water in the s middle of summer, and we had to actually prep for it because the water was 40 degrees even in oh. the middle of summer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, the guys are out there working, and there's no shower there or anything like that. You don't have a shower on the island? Well, they they do normally but the thing's not working right now there's a lot of changes there's no electricity there wait a minute, wait a minute. Let, let, wow. back up back up i mean you know this is roughing it and at your age roughing it isn't a thing you like to do no i roughed it by i went out there today and got to see what the island looks like and what are the guys doing and uh it's it's roughing it just walking on the rocks and stuff like that and not falling down and and you're knocking you know knocking yourself down yeah uh, well my my friend out there who's a long-term friend of their family or whatever he's a lobster lobster fisherman oh that's his main well, life to me roughing it is uh you know no internet oh uh, when the air conditioner <laughs> fails in the rv 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. We got uh, the kind of win- winter. That's that's what happens seriously during the summer. Because <laughs> in the winter, I think it's really bad. Really? Yeah. I don't go there then. No, no, it, it probably wouldn't want to. No, but, I didn't. Uh, so they're getting the place all fixed for you so you can then go out there and sleep overnight, right? Yeah, something like that. But you still have no place to take a dump. <laughs> they have a they have some kind of a I remember I remember once I went to a uh, some kind of I don't know, some kind of meeting up in the up in that part of the world. I can't remember where it was or whatever, right? And uh I went up there and uh uh, it, it, there were no bathrooms, right? Yeah. And if you wanted to go to the bathroom, you had to, like, nestle your butt between two rocks or something, you know. Uh, <laughs> something. And um, peeing, of course, is always easy. Guys can pee out of a moving car, you know, so it's not a problem. <laughs> but I just, I couldn't, uh, I just couldn't uh, do it in the woods. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I could never be a bear, all right? Uh, I just couldn't do it in the woods. And so I waited for like four days before we got out of there. And the first Hmm. gas station we saw, I got out. And there was a lineup because all the other people who had just left this place were waiting. Same problem. Yeah. Yeah. And then I was so plugged up because I had prevented myself from going that it was very hard to do it. You know, so... Hmm. You wouldn't have survived camp. I remember wiping myself with leaves. I went to camp. <laughs> the two I things I re- two things I remember about camp. I loved riding horses. Okay? I loved riding horses and I went to this camp and this horse threw me. Wow. And I never got on a horse. Oh, they said Get back on the horse, because if you don't get right back on the horse, you'll never get back on a horse again. So I wanted to get back on a horse again. So I got back on the horse, and he threw me again. And I said, that's it. I'm out of here. You, 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 know. you, you shouldn't have told that horse you were Jewish. <laughs> and then, uh, then at this camp, uh, we all went to take showers. And one of the showers, there was a rattlesnake. You know, it was oh, things wonderful. like that, you know, that made me kind of give up on camp, you know. And yeah, so you, 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 have you heard any such story? Oh, Kevin's leaving. He, he suddenly, uh, I think the story bothered him. Uh, that or he wasn't going to trust a fart. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Andrew told told me he's chucking in the water every morning to take nice. his his shower at whatever the hell it is, fifty degrees out or something mm. like that. God, can you you know if you're out in the water, if you're swimming in the water, you could just. If it's the ocean, you can just poop in the ocean. Well, we don't well, yeah. take a lot of showers here. And one of the reasons is because the water pressure sucks. And and it's hard to get just the right amount of water for taking a shower. So we do it once a week, you know. Uh, yeah. And, and, yeah. And, and, you know, we don't do much. It works up a sweat, so it doesn't matter. If you paid another $4,000 a month like your neighbors, then maybe the water pressure would be better. No, no, no. They Their water pressure is just as bad as mine. Really? I've asked them, no. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. If, if you're on the eighth floor of this building, you're not getting water pressure. That okay. sucks. Yeah, I know it sucks. But, you know. It really for, sucks if you're paying $4,000 a month. Yeah, but it, yeah, it, really. it, it isn't when you're paying 500 okay? No. So, yeah. 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 Um, but uh, anyway, so what else is happening? Oh, we 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 bought a new vanity for our bathroom because mm-hmm. the old one was just getting really bad, and Marjorie was cutting her hand on the mirror and things like that. So we had the uh, super come up today, and he helped us purchase a what we what would fit in there, and when we get it, he'll install it for us. So. We'll have a nice vanity with lights built in, and it has it has uh, U, a USB ports and electricity coming out of it. Wow! All that for the shower? <laughs> no, the vanity, no, the vanity, the thing in front oh, of the vanity, seat. vanity. I'm sorry, I'm thinking of something else. Never mind. What do you think? That's, that's amazing. I I, I, I was I, thinking I, of a mirror in the shower. 
<laughs> I, I was I was thinking of okay getting into a car with uh, all the extra bells and whistles in it now, and uh, you know I, I could never imagine that a bathroom vanity is going to have <laughs> interface. <laughs> well, I'm surprised it doesn't have Wi-Fi. You know, yeah. Actually, if you, you had a car, a bathroom. Yeah. If, hmm? if you had a car, Alex, with a with a, a roof that opened up. You can go through the car wash and get a free shower. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's the pits not having water pressure. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, so it's 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 uh, it's it's Wednesday and uh, it's another day in uh, in America, and uh, it, it's some you know I think this whole thing with uh, Kamala Harris is really uh, fun and invigorating, yeah. you know. Uh, oh, there isn't a day goes by that she isn't driving Donald Trump crazy. Oh, he he, <laughs> yeah. he really screwed up big time talking to some black organization today. What was her sorority? Was that it? No, yeah, the it journalist, was, the journalist uh, group. Journalist, no, but yeah. they were speaking yeah. with. I think when, when, when yeah, she had thirty oh, minutes at the journalist. No, no group. she spoke right. later on at her sorority. Yeah, that, that was, was the later. Black Journalist Association. The journalist, Trump, that's right. And, Trump yeah, was there. He said, "Yeah, she just now she calls herself black." That didn't go over real well. <laughs> Good, more blacks not voting for him. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it, 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 he said for years she just called herself Indian, but she never called herself black. Well, you know, uh, I I think maybe it's almost worse to be an Indian here in America than black. Yeah. I think and, as far know. back as 1989, she called herself black. Yep. Well, you yep. grew up in California, so you. Yep. you well, no, yep. she went to a black sorority. You know, yeah. she's oh, like, yeah, yeah. But I mean, he's he's just getting stupid. He's getting frustrated. He's getting getting. He's getting as they call in sports. He's getting in sports the gifts and getting you know. better at it. Huh? Yeah, he's just practicing. He's not getting. He's not is. He's just practicing. He's just practicing. Yeah, they're just. They still don't know how to handle it. They're so ginned up about running against Biden. And now, now yeah. it's been taken away from them. Oh, they want to sue the uh, Democratic Party yeah. for uh, putting Kamala in there because somehow was that was illegal. Well, he's only had about a week to kind of get his chops up for her, and yeah. there isn't much there to get. It'll never happen. He will. He will look like mincemeat with her. He won't show well, up. To the, he won't show up to the no, uh, he won't debate. To, no. to the debate. Oh, he won't debate. He's her. already. He's already backing out. Yeah. Right. Um, well, that was the other question that they asked him is about, you know, letting everybody off that was in January 6th. And he turned around and said, well, that was a really rough, rough uh, situation. He would let them lose if they were if they weren't guilty. He says, well, they were convicted. Yeah. And he said, he said, well, that was a really rough system. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? Party of law and order. <laughs> yeah. A really rough system. Well, you see, all okay. of a sudden, he, Explain the system. you know, before when he had Pops Biden uh, that he was running against, uh, he could beat up on the old man, you know, and, and Biden wasn't in any mental position to go challenging him or, or getting into the fray. Uh, didn't mean that he couldn't run the country, couldn't do a lot of things, but that was not the kind of thing that was working well for him now. <laughs> So he was used to like just playing the bully, which he always does, and that was fine. But now he's trying to play the bully with somebody who just don't take it, you know? Doesn't accept it. Yeah. And uh, today, what, she, what did she say? She said, um, the new saying is, uh, say it to my face. Yeah. You know? And I, I'm very proud of her. I mean, I, she's good for her. She in good the in the her. four years that she has been vice president, I think she's learned a lot, mm -hmm. and she's matured as a politician. And it's her time. It's her time, yep. and I think she's going to pull it off. I but think so too. Now, it comes now down to who does she pick as her vice presidential choice? You've got lots of choices. Well, I think the best choice uh, took himself out of the picture. The North Carolina governor, 
he he was uh, he doesn't he doesn't drink diet he, he only drinks diet sodas. He calls himself the king of diet sodas, and the only one he hates is diet. I'm going to get this wrong, but Diet Pepsi happens to be the favorite drink of what are we of talking Vice about Pre here? Vice President, tell him, Charlie. I can't. <laughs> no, happens, with you. <laughs> he happens to be, you know, the, 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 I think it's Dr. Pepper. He hates he, he hates Diet Dr. Pepper, and that happens to be the drink of choice, just coincidentally, of J.D. Vance, yeah. Diet Dr. Pepper. Oh, okay. All right. Well, well, that's that's a southern drink, by the way. You know, if you're a southerner, yeah. you like Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper Dr. Pepper's yeah. okay as long as it's not diet. Or as they call it down there, Dr. Pepper's. Yeah, I don't know why they do that. Yeah. Why did they do yeah. that? Yeah. But they I, added an S to it. Well, wow. I, went, I went down there, I moved to Houston, and uh, everybody was drinking Dr. Pepper's. In fact, Dr. Pepper was more popular than the Coca-Cola in that yep. part of oh. the world. And uh, so I figured, you know, I got to be a good Southerner here and learn how to drink Dr. Pepper. I could never get used to that crap. <laughs> uh, go go to Atlanta. It's the, it's the headquarters of Coca-Cola. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I've been to Atlanta. I uh, felt like I was at Mecca when I went to the home of Coca-Cola in Atlanta. Yeah. Absolutely. But anyway, uh, uh, but it, it, you know, it, 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 I think, okay, you can disagree with me. But I and he's been appearing a lot on television lately. And that's why I'm beginning to think that maybe he's the top choice, but we don't know it. And he would be the best choice is Pete Buttigieg. And I'm going to tell you why. Because he would bring youthfulness to that whole ticket. That she's, she's not old, okay, so she fits just right. But you put him in there and you've got yourself a young ticket. But a lot of younger kids don't care if he's gay or not either. Oh, nobody cares if he's gay or not. No. Nope. I'll tell you nope. why. Because he never makes any bones about it. He talks about his husband. He talks about his family. He talks about his children. Sounds like a great father and a loving father. Yep. And I think he is the perfect example of the American family today. Yep. And I just think mm -hmm. that she would do very well by taking him rather than some old codger, okay? And what I'm talking about is an older-looking white guy, uh, and uh, and and go with him. I think that he. Uh, anybody disagree with me about this? I think he's the best. I've been choice. saying it all along. Oh, Roberta disagrees. I think you disagree, Roberta. Yeah, I heard so many stories, and they interviewed the people on the ground in. Indiana, uh, he just totally, I mean, he raped the city. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I just do not like that guy at all. Really? And, yeah, honestly, I'm sorry. But I've he heard, speaks I've, so well. And he even goes on Fox TV. and, and I know. And I he, know. He, he, like, feels he, comfortable on Fox. Yes. Well, he, he was, he was, no he, he was the governor. He was the mayor of what town? I can't remember now. South Bend, Indiana. South Bend, Indiana. Yeah. And, and. At that age, he was a young man when he was the mayor of South Bend, Indiana. I just yeah. don't think he necessarily knew what he was doing, but I think he's been excellent at the as the uh, uh, head of the Department of Transportation. He was horrible in the East Palestine. Do you remember the big explosion with the mushroom cloud in the East Palestine, mm -hmm. and it just covered, you know, Ohio and and Pennsylvania and everything else, whatever. The fact is that he went there for about two seconds and left. And when they blew up those train cars, they did not have to blow it up. The company that owned the cars told them that it was really dangerous to blow them up. There was only one car that had any possibility of having a problem and they didn't even blow them up like the same night. They waited 24 hours. At that point, that one car was already cooling down and the company knew those cars inside and out. And they went to the uh, the transportation board and said, no, don't, you know, don't do it. Please don't do it. You don't know what you're in for because this stuff is like fatal stuff that you are going to be putting into the environment. And the, you know, the, our, our whole infrastructure just said it was okay. Yeah. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm confused. I, I, I thought there was an accident. Yeah. 
release this chemical in East Palestine. No, the cars. The were government intact. set off. The government set the this yep. into motion. Why? Because they wanted to hurry up and clear the tracks so they could get so the transportation moving again. Yep. So that was oh. after the accident. That's correct. Right. Yeah, that That's was correct. to mitigate the problem. Right. That's right. right. Yeah. Okay, so let me ask you this question. If Pete Buttigieg was the vice presidential nominee, do you think that would hurt the ticket? No, because unfortunately I know uh, lots of older people, and of course we know the older people vote, who just love that little guy. Oh, isn't he so funny and nice and he's so warm and... Yes, personable, and uh, you know. So He's, I think. Well, that, right. that, that, but probably... do you live near there? No, I'm no. I'm in Chicago land. Oh. Well, I yeah, just... but you know, you, you you go to like college campuses, and kids in college don't care if somebody's gay. As a matter of fact, nope. they have they have friends that are gay, and just about everywhere. And I think that's going to work towards his advantage. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking about what he adds to the ticket. And if he doesn't uh, diminish the ticket, I think that he's a good bet. Well, I, you know Trump's going to come up with statements, but who cares? Well, who cares? You know, I'm more curious about what what you say about that, how they mitigated that, because I come from the chemical industry and what. Oh, thank what you. They did, yeah. What All they right. did. I'll, I'm going. I'll get you a. Uh, what What happened is there. Okay, the uh, cars were under pressure. And but they were well protected against heat because obviously they knew what they were doing with the transportation. And what happened was they were trying to decide what to do. And the railroad just wanted to get the cars out of the way and get them get the whole line moving again. Mm -hmm. And even though they said that they the the, the owners of the chemicals said that it was really dangerous, they didn't have to do it and whatever, the railroad itself decided it was going to blow up the cars. And I'll get you a link. Um, well, as we talk... Uh, what does that got to do with Pete Buttigieg? Well, he was... Well, he's he a transportation. Was, I know yeah. who he is, but what is... He was, he's he in was charge of the, uh, of the oh. organizations that make these decisions that the are... The movement of the transportation, yeah. He's oh, the, clear the tracks. Of transportation. Uh, he's they the top of the line, yeah. The Department yeah. of Transportation approval to do that. Now, the reason he didn't show up is the is a good reason why he didn't show up on site is because all the all those people do is get in the way. And yep. I, I I agree that he didn't show up. I thought that was good. You know, you show up, you say hi. Now let me get out of here and get out I'm of the way. I'm trying to remember, that's, that's but it, I vaguely remember. Trump. And that's what you know I, 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 when you got vaguely, people like. Um, well, I vaguely sorry, remember I Donald Trump going out there, if I remember correctly. That's right. correct. And one yeah. of you know reasons, what happens every one time of the something Pete like that. Buttigieg said he wasn't going out there is he okay. didn't want to, as you say, didn't want to get in the way. Now, what were you saying, Kevin? No, I was just saying exactly that. Is you know, anytime there's a disaster and a dignitary shows up, it just screws everything mm -hmm. up. It mm -hmm. becomes a media circus. Yes. Right. But media it, was circus. Under, it was under his, you know. It doesn't it, matter. It, I mean, if there's a hurricane, well, it's under he, Trump or whoever the president. Oh, sure, they show up and it screws was, everything up or whatever. But he was part it, of it, the it, decision making. That's the problem. He was part of it. But there's a time when but he didn't have to show up to do it. That's no, right. that's right. true. That's my it, point. It, oh, no, that's fine. That's fine. He did show up. I don't up, hold that against him. Up, what, what I was saying is he showed up just to make his presence known. And then he let them go ahead and blow. Because up people were bitching about him not being there. That's right. Yeah. I, well, I distinctly remember saying, know, oh, Buttigieg isn't going out there. And he said, no, I'm, I don't want to go out there because I'm just going to get in the way. And people kept saying, why isn't he going out there? He's its transportation secretary or, or you know, the, you know, the transportation director. And, he, and they kept saying, so he said, screw it. I'm just going to go out always, there and I'm going to get I've the hell out. I've always hated when politicians say, well, I'm going out there. And they're only going out there to mollify the public. photo op. A photo yeah. op. And the fact is that the guy who doesn't go out there, I like better, like Buttigieg in this particular situation, because anything, he can do more by staying in Washington right. and managing the situation than going there and, as you say, 
you know, plugging up the uh, the business, you know? Plugging up the freeways, getting people, you know, they got to clear people out, and then they got to get the poor people to get cry on TV and everything else. It's like stupid. I remember when we had the, uh, the Loma Prieta earthquake in the, in the marina. Yep. And um, what's his name turned up? The, the vice president, uh, the guy who couldn't spell. Uh, oh, Quail. Well. Quail. Well. Quail shows up. And he shows up in my neighborhood, you know, and he's, he screwed up the whole Bay Area. Yeah, he's yeah. He, he's standing there on a box, looking at all the devastation in the marina, and then he gets in a car and he starts driving out of the marina. And as he's driving out of the marina, I'm standing on the corner, and the car goes right by me, and somebody on the corner yells, "Look, Alex Bennett!" So that was uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was the effect that Quail had. Uh, on on this, and he didn't help anything, you know. Uh, don't, no, don't, they had to teach him how to spell earthquake. Don't send yourself, you know. Send Tato. money. Send send the uh, stuff we need. Yep. You know. I was home when that earthquake hit. You were home in Fremont. Yep. 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 We were we were watching the news. The the uh, you know for the I mean the ball game was going on and stuff, but. I said, I said that was a mild earthquake. Nothing happened. And about four seconds later, you know, it's five oh four in the afternoon, rush hour. There happened to be a helicopter, news helicopter. I think Channel Four, filming the Bay Bridge, and you could see where the Bay Bridge was collapsed. And I'm like, holy moly, that yeah, was a lot. Yeah, no, we knew that. I, we, uh, my girlfriend and I were driving over up over Divisadero, uh, and uh, over Divisadero. Uh, and uh, we just drove up to visit, down to visit there, down the other side, and all of a sudden the earthquake hit. Uh, yeah. I didn't realize it was an earthquake at first. I thought my brakes weren't working on the car because the car started bouncing down the hill. And when I got to the bottom, I went, look, all these people are, are f just falling out into the street. And we realized there had been something went on, like an earthquake, and we turned around and went back down into the marina and all of a sudden, there were buildings that used to be there that weren't there anymore, you know. And it was quite a, it was quite a, wow. qu quite a deal, quite a deal for us, you know. Uh, let's see, Kevin to everyone, got it. We'll look later. What's this, Kevin? You will look later for. I, I I sent something to everybody, but I specifically mentioned Kevin because he said he's in the industry. That's the report on the uh, on the East Palestine. Um, train derailment yeah. and the NTSB but, and what was found. But, I mean, you can't blame a guy for not showing up. You know, uh, too many people do well, show I, I, up. The, the, point, the point was not whether he showed up or didn't. It was whether or not he made the right choices and encouraged yeah. his departments to make the right choices. And uh, it was, it seemed like he had no interest. If he's trying to avoid a circus, no problem. But he... He either made the totally wrong choice or he didn't get involved enough to make a, a proper choice. Or could it be? You know, it was new in the office, too. He was, yeah. he was what? Yeah, I was going to say Everybody that. makes mistakes. I was saying that he was. What rank you are. He was just learning, yeah. the, was just learning the job, and that's not right. a job you learn. Uh, you, you only learn while you earn. Right. Uh, <laughs> and, and I know in that industry you have a lot of different options and uh sometimes they're not good options yep. believe me yep. oh i understand yeah so some are very dangerous but uh you know we've got uh we got some really uh, interesting stuff happening and with trump with the black women and that was he walked out on it didn't he he supposedly no they they took him off yeah they took him off yeah, I think after 38 minutes, they decided he'd had enough. <laughs> <laughs> Who took him off? His people? His people. His people. I, I heard that somebody in the in the crowd was aiming for his left ear with a slingshot. Yeah. Well, there was a, you know, it was... His ear looked fine. <laughs> yeah, it did, yeah, didn't it? Fine. Yeah. Yeah. Forget Bring in Classic the bullet surgeon. Trays, it didn't look too too bad. Although the FBI says he was amazing, hit what by, Bondo does. Well, the FBI <laughs> has said that he uh, he was hit by a bullet. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, he okay. should put a couple on his head. <laughs> I believe the FBI. Yeah, I guess so. If it, if it just goes and grazes your, your hand, if you got your hand out and it goes across it, it's going to cut it. It's going to bleed. Head wounds bleed a lot. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I just don't know how you clip off the side of your ear and the bullet doesn't hit your head. Yeah. Well, if he had his head turned, he was yeah. turned to the right. If it was turned the other way straight or to the left, it would have it would have penetrated his head. And well, I, I always like the line there. that Will Durst had when Reagan was shot. And Reagan said he didn't know he'd been shot. And uh, Will said uh, that personally he'd like to have a president with a central nervous system. <laughs> well, well, Tr Trump, when, thought, when it was, Trump thought it was a giant mosquito. Like hmm? <laughs> when, when you get an injury like that, the body does not react no. totally right away. Correct. Well, he <laughs> thought it was a mosquito that bit him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You already tried that joke once and it didn't work. Yeah, was it? Yeah, it wasn't a joke. Don't don't. He, huh? he he actually he actually said that it was like the biggest mosquito bite or something like that. Was what Trump said. It felt like the biggest mosquito bite. It wasn't a joke. But yeah. anyway, so you know we got the, we uh, Trump is uh, is. I hope Trump just keeps up doing what he's doing. You know, he's uh, he's going to wind up in the in the toilet. Because what, what's happened with Kamala that he doesn't have going is there's this groundswell now of people who are behind him, who are going to turn out the vote for him and all of that that wouldn't have turned out for Biden. And that's what I think is happening. I don't think that Trump is losing anybody. Stupid people are always going to be behind Trump, okay? But what, what's happened here is this groundswell of support that uh, I don't think any other candidate has had in recent times. I don't even think Obama had this kind of groundswell. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm. Oh, yeah. Anyway, you know. That's, uh, I, I think the groundswell was there with uh, um, when everybody in 2020, when they all dropped out right before Super Tuesday, and the media just went yeah. nuts behind Biden. I think that was a very similar situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, I mean, nobody ever went nuts for Trump. I mean, he let's face it, the guy's never gotten the popular vote. Mm. Yeah, never. Uh, so why they keep relying on him and why the Republicans, the Republicans have been digging a hole for themselves. And while I'm not a Republican, and while I've never had any great love for the Republican Party, I like the idea of a good, strong, loyal opposition. And what they've done is completely weaken their position in this society. And I'm not, won't be surprised if somehow a new, new uh, uh, party gets established after this to come in and take over where the, uh, uh, the Republicans left off. Because I don't think they're going to recover out of this, especially if he loses. And I think he's going to lose big time. I don't think it's just going to be minor. I think it's going to be huge. And that's not because I want it to be that way. It's because that's the way it's beginning to look to me. We lost in 2020. And in 2022, they were going to have the big red wave that came th through there. That didn't happen. And so I think this is going to be another... All the Republicans are going to be sad because he's going to lose against Kamala. Against Biden, he would have won. He's going to lose, and they're going to get the Congress back. Yep. And they're going to get the Senate. So. And I yep. think then Kamala can do anything she wants to. Yep. Yep. Oh, yeah. and she will. Yeah. And imagine the power vacuum that's going to happen in the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's what Alex was saying. Yep. Mm -hmm. They're not. They don't. They won't know what to do. I don't know who will come along and 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 take over that party, but I hope it's somebody reasonable. You know. Well, when I said power vacuum, I was going beyond what Alex had said. I agree with you, Alex, completely. But um, I'm thinking. Imagine the 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 fights. <laughs> the I mean, we are going to have civil war within the Republican Party for those positions because those people are really. I mean, they're. Half of them are megalomaniacs. They want that position so badly yep. about it. <laughs> well, you know, you know what? Let's talk about another topic here. And this is something that Marjorie and I have been at odds about lately. And that's the Olympics. 
Uh, oh. uh, you know, I mean, I love the Olympics. I love watching some of those things. I love seeing people uh, having to do their personal best uh, and maybe win a gold medal as a result, but best of all, besting their, their, their mm -hmm. personal best. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it, it's, it, it's, it's a lot of drama, and it's wonderful. But for crying out loud, you know, it comes 6.30 and you want the news, right? And Marjorie insists on watching NBC. Three quarters of that newscast tonight was all about the Olympics. When there's a lot of other news going on. But it's this story about the Olympics and that story. The lead story was about the Olympics. And then they got, finally they got to some fires out in California and uh, what's happening with Kamala lately and Trump's, you know, imploding. And then it was back to five stories about the Olympics. <laughs> and I'm going, I'm sorry, but I don't tune in at, five, five, at 6.30 to get a sports cast. You know, I watch more Olympics today than I've seen in a year. The wait, girls, wait, 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 there haven't been Olympics in four years. Year. Oh, well, in four years, whatever. I, uh, it's, no. a, it's the first time in a long time I was actually interested in the Olympics. Yeah, because you like to watch the women on, you know, on the gymnastics team because they get wedgie oh, yeah. because they get wedgies. Uh, well, that and then the, and the, and the, today it was the women's volleyball that was playing, and I'm like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, more wedgies. Uh, now wedgies it's aren't my thing. I, I really like watching Simone Biles. I oh, just yeah. like watching an old broad who can bring it out. You know, I mean, it's wonderful. She's 27, and she's. She's doing her best that she's ever done. Yeah. You know, she the What's last. What's wrong with that? Oh, it's terrific. No. I, didn't, no. I wasn't saying there was anything wrong with it. The only thing that was uh, different about it was is that you know she got the twisties back in the last Olympics mm -hmm. uh, in Tokyo, and uh, she had to stop, and she had to pull out. But the, you know, yeah. she came back for this one. Which most women of her age would not come back for gymnastics. Yeah, that's twenty seven is real old okay. for gymnastics. Yeah. But she's good. Man is she good. Yeah. But anyway. Oh, muscles. Yeah. Yeah, we're waiting for Bree to uh, clock in here. He's probably out to lunch right now. <laughs> and we have to literally, guess what, we have to we have to guess what, we have to guess what Bree is eating. Let mm. me see here. Now Bree has, has, oh, there he is. Uh, well, it doesn't look like you in a restaurant, Bree. No, it doesn't look like it. No, not yet. Oh, not okay. yet. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm calling in for 10 or 15 minutes, and then I'll head off to lunch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, because... I like your fluorescent light overhead there, or whatever it is. And the other side there. Are, are you in an, in an office or are you at home? I'm in an office. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm in a new office. I have a new office now. Yeah, but with the ceiling doesn't look that good. No, it doesn't. I'm trying to get a position. Well, here. that's fine. That's yep. fine. That's fine. There's a lot of light, but you, you're you're coming through okay. Oops, when you went the other that. way, you had the light behind you, and then it completely yeah. made you look dark. So, uh, you know. Yeah, let's see. Yeah. That's a little better, yeah. Yeah, that's terrific. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, Bri Bri is in Thailand, so they haven't mastered the ability to light <laughs> rooms uh, yet. Yeah, they're getting there. Hmm. How are you doing, Bri? I'm doing good. Mm -hmm. I guess all things considered. Yeah. Have you been paying attention to what's going on here in the United States? Yes. You know, I was going to say, now the... The news here has uh, picked up a little bit now about the, uh, you know, wow. presidential election. So they're paying a little bit more attention, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In uh, Kamala is referred to as Sister Ha Ha, apparently in China. Oh, because so of her we, laugh. Yeah. Wow. So we get some of that here. We get some of the Chinese uh, coverage. Okay, Sister Ha Ha. <laughs> She's been yeah. called worse things. <laughs> I 
don't think, think there was that. anything wrong with her laugh. You no, know. there's nothing wrong with Sister Ha Ha. She's yeah. definitely toned it down, that's for sure. Oh, yeah, she has toned it down. You know, but I mean, yeah. you, 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 when you're running for president, you have to accommodate that sort of thing and be careful mm -hmm. about every little yeah. thing you do. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I just like the fact that she's taking chances, you know, mm -hmm. because when people run for, I, uh, I got to know, um, uh, Brown, uh, the uh, governor of Cal, became the governor of California while he was still the mayor of, of, uh, of Oakland. Uh, and, uh, he, uh, he came on my show when he was running for president. I didn't like him much because I couldn't get a straight answer out of him or anything else. <laughs> and then after he was through running for president, he came on the show. And he was delightful. And he was putting down the, uh, the highway patrol and doing all kinds of things like that. And he was just being outrageous. And I said to him, now, you're wonderful right now. This is the guy <laughs> I would have liked to have voted for for president. I said, why uh -huh. weren't you like this the last time you were here? He said, I had handlers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I suddenly realized, you know, these guys get handlers, and they tell them, don't do this, do this, to wear yeah. the tie, but don't wear the tie, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, uh, don't go after the highway patrol. Kamala seems like she's not playing by the rules exactly, you know. that She doesn't yeah. look, if she is being handled, she doesn't look it. Yeah. And I think the reason she doesn't look like she's being handled is because this thing was dropped on her really fast. And she had only a few days to get a team together. So, you know, she probably isn't as managed as most people would be. But, man, she's handled this uh, really well. I mean, yeah. Sister Ha Ha, you know. <laughs> well, she, she, I think, yeah, she's doing a good job uh, I've, I've been noticing more. I, I haven't really ever watched MSNBC, but they're coming up in my feed a lot in YouTube. And boy, they are propaganda. Oh, they're uh, terrible. It, they're terrible. Yeah. yeah. That's why I can't watch it. I can't either. It's like watching Fox News in reverse. Yeah. I mean, look, I have an opinion, but you don't have to suck my dick because I have the same opinion you do. You know, and then what these guys do is they they simply so pander to their audience, and it's not well, necessary. Their audience is not a did, stupid audience. Did you see when Bill O'Reilly went on John Stewart? Did you catch that clip? Yeah, was it good? Yeah, why can't we do that anymore? It seems like you know I used to enjoy Mike Farrell going on Sean Hannity. But he hasn't had him on in ten years. Oh, uh, Mike! You know, Mike Farrell would never have sex with Hannity. <laughs> but you know, uh, the uh, 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 I um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, didn't John Going Stewart on. and uh, and and what's his name? The guy you just mentioned, uh, uh, Hannity. Hannity. No, not Hannity. Uh, really good. Uh, O'Reilly. O'Reilly. Didn't they go on the road together and do some debates? I think Maybe they did. I think they did. Yeah. yeah. And so they kind of learned to like each other, you know. I mean, uh, 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 who was it? Uh, was uh, the Al Franken, who said that he felt the funniest guy in uh, Washington D.C. was uh, who's the guy? Lindsey Graham. He said Lindsey Graham was as funny as they come. <laughs> And, wow. he, and he had him on a, on a, when he was, I think, hosting some show. Uh, he had him on, and it was w a wonderful half hour of television. You know, wow. because these were two guys who were opposites, total opposites politically, but in, really enjoyed each other. So yeah. who says you can't be friends? Who says you can't do that sort of thing? You know. Well, the ma the media now. Yeah. Well, oh, the media wants to think it's impossible. Yeah. Yeah. I just miss that. I'm, I mean, you know, the, the coarseness in our politics is reflected in the media. The media, they need to sit down and, you know, have these conversations again, in my opinion. Well, when I was working at WMC Hay, uh, I went on after a guy by the name of Bob Grant. And if anybody knows New York City, mm -hmm. Bob Grant 
big major right winger, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right? I used to listen to his, uh, even though I didn't agree with him, he was actually really entertaining, though. And he uh, and I would go back and forth with each other for about five minutes before, as a crossover mm-hmm. between his show and my show. And it was purely entertaining because I had a completely opinion, a complete opinion opposite of his, and yet it appeared we got along. You know, was he that fiery Alex off the air? Was that oh, really? Oh him? no, he's a nice guy. Really, he nice seemed guy. like. I mean, I listened to him because I liked his different. When the calls used to argue with me, when I was a kid, it would be funny that they would go back and forth. <laughs> yeah, I went back to W O R. I went to work for W O R to do some fill in. And uh, the program director at the time said, "Come early. I want you to meet somebody." I came by, and and it was it was uh, Grant, and we hadn't seen each other in years, and we loved seeing each other. And people wouldn't believe the kind of camaraderie that he and I had with and continued to have with each other, and that was good radio, you know. <laughs> that was yeah. really good radio. That. T- that turnover from one show to another every night, people looked forward to. Because we'd be yelling at each other and calling yeah, each other names, call and we'd be doing this and doing it. And afterwards, we just liked each other, you know? So. Yeah. I mean, I saw Ben Shapiro on Bill Maher. That's sort of close to it. But, you know, I just miss that. I miss the ability to have, you know, a nice conversation between the sides, you know? Well, it shouldn't, you know, it shouldn't be that we're, you know, we can be political adversaries, but we don't have to be uh, hateful and despicable of each other, you know? I don't, uh, you know, and, I, and so I never hated uh, Bob Grant. People were amazed that I didn't hate Bob Grant. I mean, even Tony, as I'm talking to. about here. Yeah, I mean, I never asked Shecky that question because we didn't talk a lot of radio. But I would have, I can't see you really hate him, Alex, because I can see you guys were contemporaries, I would imagine, right? I mean, you know, you probably he, disagree with him, but I don't think you can old, ever really no, he was old, he was older than I was. Yeah, like I could see you having a difference, but I don't think you would really have any resentment towards somebody. You really didn't like Kennedy. Remember, you were saying he, like, he was a real dick. Well, I, my whole line was it's only radio for crying out loud. You know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, anybody who 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 is in this business who thinks he's going to change the world by a talk show is out of his goddamn mind. You know, and he thinks way too much of himself to think he's going to change it. I mean, I said that to Hannity one day yeah, uh, I mean, uh, it, when we were doing a little debate thing on Alan Combs' show, oh and, and and I said to him, uh, uh, "Hey." Um, you know, uh, uh, John, uh, it, it's just radio for crying out loud. You know, it's just show business. He said, "I'm not show business." And I, but boy, <laughs> you're taking this too. I beg ser- to differ from you. Yeah. Alex Jones changed yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 you're taking yeah. this too seriously. That's, and that's what's so funny. When I saw Laura Ingram, uh, mm-hmm. you know, interviewing the president. It's like she sits very prim and proper, like as if she's a journalist or something. And then she goes into her talk show mode, you know. And it's like, what the heck's going on here? Yeah. Before you I know, check, this is not. Before I check in with Don Giller, I just want to give you one more observation I had this week. I was watching um, some congressional hearing. I'm trying to remember which one it was. Oh yeah, it was with the FBI, right? It was and and it, you get these guys who want to seem like they're the big boy, big guy on campus, and they go after the people they're, you Like know. Josh Hawley? Yeah. yeah. And my argument was, you invited these people here. Treat them nicely. You have no, no, no right the, to berate them and yeah. call them names <laughs> and to, to you know, <laughs> they're the seem judges. outraged. Yeah, it's horrible. It's just horrible. You invited them here. Be, they're a guest in your house. Give them cookies, you know. <laughs> yeah, uh, give them shit. Hey, hey, Don, how you doing, pal? I got a question for Don. <laughs> okay. If you turn around, what's in that folder about the yellow one right by the cough syrup, right in the middle on the bottom? Can you pull it out and tell us what's in it, in okay, that folder? This is, this no, not the, the cough syrup, the filter. This is, this is, uh, I oh, that. Yeah, my wife uses that. But I want to know what's in the folder. 
Yeah, which one? The one down yeah, three a little from bit the up, bottom, up, three up, 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 right there. <laughs> there right there. What's it now? <laughs> you, you just want that whole pile out? What's, the, what, what's in that one? You expect me to pull it out? Yeah, pull it out oh, and read it to us. I'm curious. No, wait a minute. Let me ask you. Everything's going to fall down. Don't, don't do really it. Don't do it. Don't do it. He wants to see it collapse. He's really going to do it. He's going to do it. Oh, my He's going to do it. do it. Okay. What is... What is? Uh, I would keep waiting for the whole thing to fall down. That was the wrong one, Don. <laughs> Damn, I, I was I was playing a little playing a little Django with you, but I figured it'd fall down or something. <laughs> Those are instructions to something. It's vacuum. It's it's the manual to his TV he bought fifty years ago. Right. <laughs> uh, 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 that pile. It's what you were looking for yesterday. Ah, ah, the late show. Look at that. Late See, show. this is the uh, walkthrough show before the 1991. Wow. See, I knew it. I knew I pulled out a good one. Oh, what, what's a <laughs> what's a walkthrough show? Uh, it's a. Uh, let me see. This is the. Uh, oh, it's also a, a shakedown show. Um, okay. What's a shakedown show where they try and get money out of everybody? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, a shakedown show is a test show with an audience before before the, the before the shows before the show launched. And oh, there were I, wow! And there were two of them. Here's the second one. Oh. Wow! The the walkthrough show was the very first ninety three hour length show, but it was without an audience because they needed to see what you know what what. Yeah. To get the technical glitches out of the way, see, okay. see what's going on, see what's going on. Was there a, was an audience of maybe ten people. Sometimes they uh, used to call that or some, they some used, staffers, yeah. some CBS executives, hmm. but, but that was it. In the old days, and they used to call that a, they called that a technical rehearsal in some cases. I guess so. Yeah. yeah. But here they call it run run through. Wow. Okay. Wow. Boy, I'm glad you requested that, Kevin. Kevin yeah, but, geez. Well, Kevin, you I actually, really didn't think he was going to pull it out myself. He pulled I think every out. night he's got to pull out a new folder. <laughs> <laughs> I got this on eBay, mm -hmm. and it was some, the guy who sold it. And I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, Mark, Mark Trust. Mark Trust, yeah. of course. That was. Uh, that was uh, uh, Shecky's Shecky's co co partner co partner yeah in wow. uh, in their film uh, yeah selling business yeah and Mark in fact uh, as part of the he was my, he was in the uh, in the uh, will and got uh, all the bi that business uh, oh. you know rather than people fight about it he just gave it all to him so you know Mark's a great guy. Mark's you business. called for a reason, though, Don, right? Pardon me? You no. called for a reason, no, right? he always calls during the last five minutes yeah, of the no. show because yeah, he know. knows we can't get him to to commit to anything. And I wasted it on the folder of the night. Yeah. Well, yeah. Kind of <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I have some, I have some uh, uh, V discs over here. V discs? Uh, oh, yeah. World War II. I watched uh, this World War II show, the David Letterman show that he did at the airport. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he, I don't know if you can see it. These these are the V discs right here. V discs. Oh yeah, yeah. It tells you how to get a a, a good shower on the eighth floor. <laughs> what? what? I, 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 it, it just no more jokes, please. Uh, not tonight. Save that for There tomorrow. hasn't been one yet. Hey, I don't listen, know what you're talking about. We're, we're playing. <laughs> there's uh, there's I'm, a theme I'm, play. I'm backtracking. I'm hmm? backtracking. I think it'll be Shapiro. Oh, okay. Really? Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thanks to Jeff for being here. He's out on that island or something or in a motel near the island. Long's uh, Island. Yeah. And uh, thanks to uh, um, uh, our Alan for being here tonight. Uh also, Charlie Wallace. Charlie, always great to have you here. Roberta, you have become a, such an asset to this program. I'm so glad you've been calling every night. Thank you. Thank you to Kevin. I hope you didn't get a little frustrated there, Kevin, but uh, I hope we let you get your, your two cents worth in. Okay. Uh, Tony, thank you. And thanks, of course, to Bree out there in, uh, the, uh, in Malaysia. 
And finally to Don Geller. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. What is that? We'll ask him next time. We'll see you next time, ladies and gentlemen. Bye-bye. There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our panel for tonight. We'll see you again uh, tomorrow night. Uh, uh, next is uh, Amy Manuel. She's got the intersections. You can call her at, at uh, GabNet Live on Skype. Okay? I'll see you tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. Okay? Bye, everybody. Bye.